Welcome to Accessible Art History, the podcast, the best place for art history lovers or anyone that is curious. My name is Annalisa, and I'm here to share an incredible work with you. Just a quick reminder before we get started. All sources and images will be posted on the Accessible Art History blog. You can find the link in the episode description as well as on our Instagram at accessible.art.history. Now that we have that out of the way, let's get started. Welcome back to Accessible Art History, the podcast. This week, we are continuing our journey through the 20th century and landing in the realm of pop art. To highlight this period, I have to talk about one of the most famous names, Andy Warhol. His 1962 work, The Maryland Diptych, begs the question, what is art? So to learn more, keep on listening. The Maryland Diptych is a massive piece, measuring as 6 feet by 9 feet. features 50 identical images of a movie star Marilyn Monroe. Half of the images are in color, the other half in black and white. Warhol created the images using silk screening techniques from a publicity photo from Monroe's 1953 movie Niagara. Fascinatingly, this work was created just weeks after the star's death. Personally, I think the description from the Tate Gallery's label sums it up very well. The museum is the home of the work, and so they know best. It reads as follows. Warhol made his first paintings of Marilyn Monroe soon after the actor died of a drug overdose on August 5, 1962. Warhol used a publicity photo for her 1953 film Niagara as the source image. The use of two contrasting canvases from Marilyn Diptych illustrates the contrast between the public life of the star, who was at the time one of the most famous women alive, and her private self. This was not necessarily Warhol's intention. He created the work when art collectors Burton and Emily Tremaine visited Warhol's home. They suggested that the two canvases he had already been made be presented as a diptych, to which Warhol replied, Gee whiz, yes. Marilyn Monroe, the subject of this piece, is one of the most famous names from 20th century Hollywood. She was discovered as a young woman working in a factory during World War II. Monroe quickly found fame as a model and later as an actress. She oozed sex appeal, beauty, and glamour. Her movies were immensely popular, grossing over $200 million. Monroe's love life was equally as fascinating. She was married three times and had relationships with some of the most famous men of her age. Sadly, Marilyn Monroe passed away unexpectedly on August 5, 1962. She was only 36 years old. She ruled a suicide by overdose of sleeping medication. Her sudden death and successful career launched Monroe into the realms of celebrity immortality. In art history, diptychs were primarily used in a religious contest, especially as part of altarpieces. However, Warhol decided to flip that concept upside down and use it to represent the worship of the cult of celebrity. On one hand, we have the colorful, larger-than-life images of Marilyn Monroe, and the other, the black and white ones symbolize her death and a lasting impact on the entertainment industry. It's a way for Warhol to project the idea of life and death and celebrity and fame into a familiar space. Next, I'm going to dive deeper into Andy Warhol and his art, but first, let's take a quick break. Annalisa, and I'm the founder of Accessible Art History. As a part of my content offerings, I produce a podcast. For the first several seasons, I will be discussing 50 objects that shape the history of Western art. From prehistoric cave paintings to contemporary art, I'll be covering it all. The podcast was designed for everyone, from the casual couch historian to a museum's expert. It all fits within the larger mission of Accessible Art History to create a space for art history lovers, students, and anyone who is curious to explore all periods of art history and human creation. New episodes drop every Monday on your favorite podcast platform. Make sure to follow the Instagram page for all updates at accessible.art.history. Now that we're back, let's take a look at the concept of appropriation art. As I mentioned earlier in the episode, the work of art was created using a publicity photo of Marilyn Monroe. Warhol did not receive permission from the original photographer for use of this work. In fact, he had to settle with the estate of the photographer for for benefiting from its use. In some cases, like his Campbell Soup Cans works, the original creators didn't mind because they saw the benefits of free advertisement. But is this appropriation art, or is it just stealing? 
It's not so cut and dry. Art is continuously borrowing from and transforming elements from other cultures and artists. In fact, Warhol's philosophy for the style of art borrows heavily from Dadaism and the ready-made art movement. This question is quite tricky, but it's definitely worth thinking about. The Maryland Diptych is classified as a piece of pop art. The Tate defines this movement as an art movement that emerged in the 1950s and flourished in the 1960s in American Britain, drawing inspiration from the sources of popular and commercial culture. Different cultures and countries contributed to the movement during the 1960s and 70s. Artists of this period didn't feel that their art fit the traditional point of view, so they used elements of culture to get their meaning across. Critics found this thought trajectory lowly and believed that their art wasn't worthy. It's just an exploration of everyday themes and ideas. So who was the man behind the work? Andy Warhol was born Andrew Warhola on August 6, 1928, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. His parents had emigrated from Slovakia, and he was one of three sons. As a child, he suffered from Sydenham Chorea, a neurological disorder commonly known as St. Vitus Dance. It caused his involuntary movements, and it did prevent him from going to school during bad flare-ups. Warhol also suffered from pigmentation issues that caused the discoloration of his skin. The crueler students would call him Spot or Andy the Red-Nosed Warhola. This helped to explain his later fascination with fashion wigs and makeup. To help alleviate some of his health-related stress, his parents bought him a camera at age 8. Recognizing their son's talents, Warhol's parents saved up their money to send him to the Carnegie Institute of Technology, now Carnegie Mellon University, from 1945 to 49. After graduation, he moved to New York City and found success as a graphic designer and illustrator. This has allowed him the funds to experiment with other artistic mediums. His loft at 231 East 47th Street, known as the Silver Factory, became known as an artistic community. Throughout his decades-long career, Warhol would experiment with mediums like silk screening, sculpture, video, and photography. He worked with and collaborated with some of the most famous names in the art and fashion scene, becoming a true icon of the 20th century. Sadly, Andy Warhol passed on February 2, 1987, due to complications following a surgery that was to remove his gallbladder. He left behind a legacy of an experimentation and a bold attitude of what art could be. To sum things up, I think the quote by him from his book, The East Village Other, from 1966, is perfect. If you want to know all about Andy Warhol, just look at the surface of my paintings and films and me, and there I am. There's nothing behind it. The Maryland Diptych is at a crossroads of art and mass-produced media. Is it art? Or is it appropriation? Maybe it's a bit of both. Make sure to tune in next week when I discuss The Spiral Jetty by Robert Smithson. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Accessible Art History, the podcast. Make sure you follow us on Instagram at accessible.art.history for updates and keep an eye out for our next episode. They drop every Monday on your favorite podcast platform.